So I want to show you how I would connect a little Arduino clone to a, this is a nano clone, how I would connect it to an OLED when I'm experimenting on my little robot that I made, which I did the OLED eyes, which I used a teeny pie Pico on. I used obviously a completely different type of processor board, but you might have one of these around. They might be easier to get for you or harder to get, who knows with the chip shortage. But anyway, these can be a lot, lot cheaper. So um, I'll just show you when you're experimenting and how you sort of like learn how to um, connect these bits of electronics together. So basically this is a breadboard. You can get them in different shapes. So I've got a, a much smaller one there, again with an OLED in it. You see I've had an OLED delivery, which is why I can do videos again. Depending on your breadboard, most breadboards are sort of all these little sockets are connected i mean sometimes in in the olden days there's a a b c d e on each of these and numbers on each of these connections so you've got like a matrix and you can follow an instruction like a pattern as to where, what to wire to where but these are really good for just connecting stuff without soldering then you need these things which are dupont connectors a little jumper flyer wires and each of those has got like a pin on the end, not sharp pin, and it goes into one of these holes. So when you connect something to one of those holes, it will also connect to each one of those four little holes next to it. So this is all along the line like that, but it doesn't connect over that bump in the middle. Now your Arduino or your Pi board has got these two legs. So if you put it in there, you see I'm jumping that hole in the middle there. Then if I put that into that line then whatever that pin there is that's what's connected so each of these pins has got a little name on it so we can might just about be able to see those so you've got 3.3 volts and you've got a0 a1 a2 a3 etc and uh, some d ones on the other side and some other different specialist named pins so in the same way my little oled board has got only four pins two of those pins are for voltage hang on let's see can we see better on this one that i've not soldered yet so two of those pins are for voltage which is a ground a positive and a negative vcc is positive gnd is negative now this board also, when you plug it in, this board will also supply a little bit of voltage out on the pins and it's enough to drive an OLED. So that's how, how you do it. And there's no different from the Raspberry Pi Pico board as well. You have to be careful what you plug in, but these little OLED screens are fine as long as you're not plugging lots of other things in. So as these have got power on, let's bring those down there. First of all, I connected the ground to the ground. So there's a ground output there on that pin, it says GND. So let's plug it there. Actually, I'm going to plug it close to the pin. And this very first pin down the bottom there is also a ground. So that's connected a path back to where the power comes from. And then you've got to actually send the power to it somewhere along here. I think it's the second one got 3.3 volts out now I know these are 3.3 screens because they were when I bought them so let's connect that to VCC now if I were to connect the power to something like my Mac that I've got here that would power up the screen so I'll plug it in a little light slit up on the Nano but that's not surprising because that's plugged directly into the PC I and mean, it could be plugged into a power bank as well it's just I've got the Mac here so that's plugged into it. So that's live. That live. That's live as well. But you can't see anything on it because we're not telling it to do anything. So that's on, but you can't tell. I'm just going to get a bit of blue tack below that, so that I can hopefully jam it so it doesn't reflect. Okay. So we should be able to see that now. So the next thing we've got to do is send the data across. These screens use I2C, and that's the name of the interface. So let's get green, yellow. So there's a data bus. Now it just so happens that within the program, within the code that I'm using, it specifies which of these pins to use. And it uses pin four and five, I think, if I remember correctly. Data 
goes on pin 4, S data, so that's the top one. And then you have to, the data is going at a various different time things. So you have to have a clock so that the receiving things knows the speed that the data is coming. So here's the clock is next to it. So that's this pin. So mostly if you get a piece of code, it will tell you the pins to use. And if you, you're clever and you understand how you can sometimes change the use of pins on these, you can specify a different pin if you want. So let's plug that into the clock. Now, if I've got that correct now, that should be displaying something, but it's not. But that's just because when these boards start up, it has to send some signals to initialize the screen. So I'm hoping if I reset, if I reset this and I've got the wires right, um, it will get something on the screen. Let's try. I've already downloaded the code on that. So that's not working. So I might have got my clock and my data the wrong way around, which I do because I'm not reading from notes. So let's put the clock and the data. And because these are low voltage, it doesn't really matter if you get them in the wrong way. If you got the power in the wrong way, that would be a whole different ball game. But OK, so I think one of these wasn't in properly. So let's try again. So the four is the data line and the pin A5 is the clock line. So let's do a reset and see what happens. So I think that yellow wire was a bit plain up, so I'm going to replace it with an orange wire because it doesn't matter about the colours. OK. So you see on this little bit of code, I did a, a funny little boot up sequence. And then there's some animated eyes again. So one more thing, because this is a bus, this I2C is a bus, which means that it's like connected on a road and the bus is the signal going across. Each of these little screens has its own little ID code, but when you buy them together, they're all the same. But the nice thing about that or the interesting thing about that is you can plug another one in and drive two with the same signal. So let's get um, the black and the red. Again, this is why you use more of these pins. So I'll take them. That's taking the black and the red off there, which is coming from here. And let's put it, make sure I do it the right way in there. And then I can pick up the data signals again as well. So let's get the data and the clock and move those down to All right, so when I've got those wired up correctly, I managed to wire them up backwards. So it shows that the screen managed to survive by wiring it up the wrong way around. So they're both being controlled by the same uh, processor on there on the same bus. Now in your programs, you can you could change the idea of this and this could be like a screen two and that's screen one. So you could send one signal to screen one and a different one to screen two. So you could have two of these maybe further apart with one eye on each and do that in your code. So just some interesting thoughts about how, again, how you could use some of these little boards in a scratch build. And if you can't get hold of the Raspberry Pi, uh, Picos, see if you can get hold of an Arduino Nano. You can also use a very similar thing, which is called an ESP module, which works with Wi-Fi, believe it or not, but you can control and program that the same way and uh, get it to make one of these screens work. I'll go through the code for this really briefly on another video. So um, now you know how to wire it up. The next thing is I'll show you the Arduino code for it. Hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe and bye.